Hello, Live Oak friends. As Katie probably told you already, I am so sad I am not there with y'all today because I am at a required bass instructional training. Since I can't be there in person, I decided to just send a digital version of myself to help kick off our 2016-2017 math unit planning. Woohoo! To get us started, I want to say how proud I am of the work y'all did last year on math unit plans, and it was really exciting for me to see our amazing math star results because I know they were very much deserved. And beyond the scores, I also want to take time to tell y'all how much I thoroughly enjoyed getting to walk side by side with each team during our planning sessions and seeing the understanding and confidence built along the way for both teachers and students. Okay, enough with the cheesy stuff. Let's get down to business because I know y'all don't have time to waste with tomorrow being the first day of school. Good luck, by the way. I'm so excited for the students entering our building tomorrow. They're extremely lucky to be attending such an amazing school. So here are a few updates that you'll want to know about as you begin to plan your math instruction. First, um, the ARC has changed slightly, so be sure to look it over and watch the What's New video on your grade level's math ARC. You can find it on the page with your instructional timelines for the year. It's about 13 minutes long, but you only have to watch it once. Second, you will notice that there are fewer units because they've combined some units from last year to give teachers more freedom and choice in the flow of a unit. Um, we'll still cover everything, but do it in a way that's most beneficial for your students. Third, every unit now has a video overview that's only four to six minutes long and gives you exactly what it says, an overview of the unit. Um, it includes highlights for the unit and explanations of content. Fourth, there are, a few, there are fewer DCAs this year, yay. No constant feeling like you're testing, scanning, repeat. Um, also, the DCAs are longer, about 10 to 12 problems each, another yay. Now, because the units are longer and DCAs are fewer, we'll need to make sure we're creating assessments, both formative and summative, throughout the units. But our DCA will be a guide when we're thinking about the unit as a whole. Last, I just wanted to show you that there is a copy of our unit planning protocol in our 1617 team folder, and each grade level folder has a copy of the math unit plan that you can use to begin writing or planning units or tweaking unit plans if your team already has them from last year. Just as a reminder for those of you who are returning and to clarify for our new teammates, We'll use the unit planning protocol as a guide for planning. This includes watching the video overviews, reading the unit rationale, uh, looking at the TEAK specificities, which are found in a link from each individual TEAK now, and uh, the misconceptions. Then gather any resources or preview resources on the ARC before coming together as a team. Then when your team meets to put the plan together, you'll review the DCA and assessment items. There are sample items um, in the units to get a good idea of our goals for the unit and use the template to create the plan. This is of course including our focus teak lessons and experiences, our spiral review activities, and our computational fluency that's found in our math block each day. And, by the way, I shared these documents during summer PD this summer, and the rest of the district is very impressed with the work happening at Live Oak and eager to get their hands on our templates. So, once again, thank you all for your hard work last year, and I look forward to working alongside each of you this school year. Thanks, and good luck tomorrow!